Uh, today's my topic is uh, uh, deal with the uh, issue on how to treat the uncertainty, especially in the uh, clearance regulation. In the case of the clearance regulation, it is very important to estimate the nuclide vector. Nuclide vector means the ratio of difficult to measure nuclides, uh, such as beta or alpha emitters, to easy to measure nuclides, such as gamma emitters. This is the nuclide vector. Please remind this. This issue has also been discussed at the international level, which means it has worldwide effects on the regulation for natural and artificial radionuclides. So that I'm a member of the consultation meeting of the DS500 draft making, so that I would like to discuss by using this opportunity. I'd like to express my special thanks to all members who engaged in this assignment here. This is um, one example, real example of the nuclear vector in clearance uh, in nuclear power plant in the Japan. X-axis shows the uh, cobalt-60 concentration, and the uh, Y-axis shows the strontium-19. So the, in the case of the compliance of the clearance, uh, we have to uh, prove the uh, summation rule, uh, just like the, oh, sorry. This equation. So the concentration of the cobalt 60 divided by clearance level and the strontium 19 concentration divided the strontium 19 clearance levels. And the summation of these values uh, have to be lower than the one. In the case of the strontium 19, the frequently the uh, estimate by using the, uh, this relationship previously obtained uh, just before the uh, clearance judgment. But um, there is a problem. Uh, how do we treat the, uh, such an uncertainty for the nuclide vector? If we measure the disk cobalt 60 around here, but you can see that this relationship varied beyond the order. In that case, it's very difficult to uh, uh, problem that happened. So then today's my contents is uh, four items. One is a uh, clearance regulation in Japan. And the second uh, is the uh, situation of the international standards for uncertainty in measurements. And third, was, uh, third is a uh, discussion. So this is a uh, um, slide for the uh, clearance regulation in Japan. Um, the re reactor regulation law in Japan was amended in 2005 uh, to provide for the clearance level. Uh, Japanese clearance level is uh, completely the same as RSG 1.7. RSG 1.7 is a very important safety guide in IAEA, uh, which is, was already the, uh, incorporated into the BSS. So the, the clearance system in Japan has been buried since uh, December 2005. After that, uh, in June 2006, the Japan Atomic Power Company, JAPC, submitted the first application of clearance from Tokai Power Station in Japan. To resolve the issue on how to treat the uncertainties in those days, a probabilistic approach was established in the Atomic Energy Society of Japan standards in 2005. And also that this idea incorporated into the IA safety report number 67. And roughly said that this approach provides a method of judging whether the uncertainty of the nuclide vector is too large or not by giving the Monte Carlo calculation tool for free use. And um, this, oh, sorry. Oh. Oh. This two item is a uh, judgment. If we, um, uncertainty is too large, operators are required to set a safety factor. Uh, this means a reduction in the clearance level for the easy to measure nucleus. But uh, in the other case, if it is not too large, uh, uncertainty is not too large. In that case, the operators do not have to consider the uncertainty further. Um, due to the time limitation, I will omit the, this explanation today. Uh, but uh, this is the idea uh, in the IAA safety report number 67. Using the uh, probabilistic approach, the JAPC firstly obtained uh, approval uh, from the uh, METI NISA. This is a regulatory authority, the old one, in the September 2006. 
But、uh, however, after the Fukushima accident, the regulatory organization responsible for the approval of the clearance was changed from the METI NISA to the、uh, Nuclear Regulatory Authority, NRA, in 2012. In September 2016, the JAPC submitted an application for clearance again by using the、um, probabilistic approach for the Tsuruga Power Station Unit 1. However, the probabilistic approach has not been approved by the NRA now. So, the, to justify not applying the probabilistic approach, the NRA revised the draft guide. For measurement and evaluation for clearance to give the clear requirements of the uncertainty,、um, referring the ISO 11929.、Uh, this、uh, number is very important,、uh, I'll、uh, touch on later. The new NRA's new decision on the uncertainty is the following、uh, When performing clearance measurement, the upper confidence level of the measurement and evaluation must be below the clearance level. Uh, this is、uh, up to the about 10 times stricter than the probabilistic approach. After the public consultation in June to uh, July, um, with many objective comments to the NRA's strict decision on the uncertainty by the、uh, RP experts in Japanese, the NRA finally decided to make a requirement of the uncertainty valid on this September. So, the second. Item is、uh, background current situation in the international standards, especially for the conformity assessment for the clearance. Ah, sorry, for the,、uh, some criteria. So, the, there are、uh, two international standards regarding the、uh, conformity assessment、uh, for the such a、uh, criteria. So, the ISO 11929 is、uh, regarding the、um, detection limit, something like that. So, that this uh, uh, new ESO was released this year, and the second one is ESO IEC Guide 98 to 4. I'll explain the,、uh, one by one. The ESO,、uh, its title is the Determination of the Characteristic Limits, for example, the Decision Threshold, a Detection Limit, and the Limits of the Coverage Interval. But、um, there is no description. About conformity assessment using the upper confidence level in this ESO. There is no. So, the ESO, this ESO simply provides a scientific foundation、uh, for the concept of the decision threshold, de detection limit、uh, for measurements and、uh, coverage interval.、Uh, coverage interval, so、uh, this is called the、uh, uh, confidence interval in the 2010. So, this is the ESO IEC Guide 98 4. The title is、uh, Evaluation of Measurement Data, and the subtitle is important The Role of Measurement Uncertainty in Conformity Assessment.、Um, this is a very、um, sort of comprehensive figure. If TU is a clearance level, if、uh, some measurement or the estimated data has uncertainty, in that case, the upper confidence level of the measurement must be below the Upper tolerance limit. In this case, it,、uh, this is the clearance level. So, the, this ISO IEC guide 98 4 was released by the JCGM. The JCGM is the Joint Committee for Guides in Meteorology. This JCGM consists of eight organizations, including the ISO and IEC. However, The JCGM, I think, has not been directly linked with the radiological protection community. The scope of this guide, I think, that it seems to be limited to the application to the, for example, product control with a very severe requirement for accuracy, for example, in the size or mass of the product control. So, third point is the discussion. According to the, to the ISO IEC Guide 98.4, it seems to be justified for the NRA in Japan to require the upper confidence level of the measurement results must be below the clearance level. It seems to be justified. However, 
This requirement should be carefully discussed from a viewpoint of the radiological protection. This is、um, my、uh, opinion. Since this、uh, issue has also been discussed at the、uh, international level, ongoing the revision process of the、uh, safety guide, so the, please consider there is a possibility that this requirement might be shared worldwide in due course through the DS500,、uh, leading to the、uh, worldwide effects on clearance regulations, not only clearance. Not, but also the all radiological, the other criteria. This is my concern. And also, that this requirement on the uncertainty in clearance raises serious concerns. Oh, this is various other radiological protection regulations for natural and also the artificial nuclei. This is because, please think about the clearance regulation. If we need strict treatment for uncertainty, Even in the case of the compliance with the trivial dose, that means 10 micro s i e v e r t per year for clearance, the same or more stricter treatment for conformity assessment might have to be applied to other radiological protection criteria for those larger than 10 micro s i e v e r t per year. For example, those limits for workers and public, a national regulator level for the radon concentration. A surface contamination criteria for daily radiation control by survey metal, a derived discharge limit for liquid and gaseous natural and artificial materials, and also the on and off site measurement in the Fukushima area. This is my concern. So, the, I would like to discuss the,、uh, from the、um, four viewpoints. One viewpoint is a、uh, methodology. Used to drive the clearance level. You know the RSG 1.7 have the clearance level value, but the methodology used to do derive clearance level is,、um, was described in the safety report series number 44. And this safety report includes two of those criteria to drive clearance level. One is a 10 micro s i e v e r t per year for Realistic scenario. And the other criteria is one millisievert per year for the low probability scenarios. Two of those criteria were used in the derivation of clearance level. This is an important point. So, this indicates that clearance levels have been determined while permitting the possibility of a dose greater than 10 microsievert per year, especially in the case of low probability situations. And also, that this permission can also be found in the procedure in which the clearance levels were selected as a rounded value. You know, the clearance level, for example, the 0.1, 1.0, 10, and 100, this is rounded value. And also, the third point is、uh, one more important point is、uh, many conservative assumptions are included in the derivation of clearance level. And also, the, we can see the um, um, related、uh, phrase in the publication 104.、Uh, this title is The Scope of Radiological Protection Control Measures.、Uh, in the paragraph 95, we can find an important phrase regarding the uncertainty. The Commission considered that in case of uncertainty or variation in the radionuclide composition of a material, So, this radionuclide composition is the same as a nuclide vector. There is not usually a need to make clearance levels stricter. However, if the uncertainty in, in nuclide vector are very large, the regulatory body may establish specific criteria for clearance. One of the specific criteria、uh, would be the probabilistic approach, I think. Uh, given in the、uh, IAEA safety report number 67. As the ICRP recommended,、uh, if the uncertainty in the nuclear vector is judged to be not so large, in that case,、uh, there would be no need to apply, the,、um, for example, the ISO IEC guide 1984. This is my view. And the second、uh, viewpoint for the discussion is the balance. In radiological protection system with a graded approach. 
uh, Jean and Francois uh, stressed that this graded approach in the uh, Radon uh, RP, so that I'll touch in the, uh, from the uh, GSR part three. You know the international basic safety standard is the GSR part three. In this requirement six, um, the application of the requirements shall be commensurate with the likelihood and magnitude of exposure. And the application of the requirement of these standards shall be in accordance with the graded approach. And the important point is um, this one, defining the terminology. So the stringency of the control measure and conditions to be applied is commensurate to the extent practical with the level of risk associated with the loss of control. So loss of control for the 10 micro seatbelt buyer. Please consider uh, this situation. But uh, this uh, um, expression is uh, not so easy to understand. So the, this uh, requirement can be summarized specifically for clearance in an easy to understand manner. Uh, that is, the requirements for clearance shall be applied using the method in which the stringency of the control measures is commensurate with the level of risk associated with 10 micro seatbelt per year. Uh, since the health risk of radiation on the order of 10 micro seatbelt per year is so trivial, you know, so that the use of stringent method for clearance regulation, for example, the ISO IEC guide 98-4, uh, should be obviously avoided. This is my view. And the third point is the difference between product control and radiological protection. So the, in the scope of the ISO IEC guide, items used to demonstrate the assessment of conformity are limited. For, for example, the, a gauge block, a grocery scale, or a blood sample, the scope of this guide seems to be limited to a product control with a very severe requirement for accuracy. On the other hand, you know, radiological criteria were not originally established as the borderline between safety and danger. The effective dose criteria for clearance on or exemption is a typical borderless case uh, because it is not a single value of 10 micro seatbelt per year. That is um, defined as a flex value on the order of 10 micro seatbelt per year. Now, when considering the meaning of conformity, we can easily find a significant difference between product control and RP criteria. And in the field of the product control, there is no concept of the uh, order of the criteria, and also the probabilistically occurring by gradation as a result of the stochastic effects. This is a very special uh, uh, situation in the RP criteria. Moreover, there is no similar rule in the accuracy control in the product. So that we can see the um, good phrase in the paragraph 7.45 in the IEA GSG 7 and the ICRP publication 75. Um, this uh, document is uh, IEA's occupational uh, basic uh, radiation protection. And uh, publication 75 is regarding the general principle for the radiation protection of workers. And um, this is the schematic uh, figure uh, for the, this, uh, uh, oh, sorry, I forget it. In the region of the near the relevant dose limit, a factor of 1.5 in either direction is considered acceptable. So the, this document say the acceptable level for uncertainty. In the region of the recording level, recording level means one or two millisieverts per year. In that case, is an acceptable uncertainty of plus minus 100% is implied. So the, if the 20 millisieverts per year here, 1.5 times uncertainty is exceeding that this level is acceptable. In this case, it's uh, two times. In the case of the 10 micro seabelt year, there is no number, but uh, please consider by yourself. In the case of the uh, regulatory guide for the clearance in, in NRA, 
is here. And taking into account the different meaning of the criteria for product control and radiation co protection, uh, there would be no need to use a methodology of the, for example, ISO IAC Guide 1984, I think. However, if the uncertainty is that nuclear vector is too large, a safety factor might be needed for clearance judgment, as I said, explained. The final point for the discussion is our understanding of health risk of radiation of 10 microsievert per year. Uh, this is our experience in the uh, Fukushima area. Uh, that was a dialogue forum uh, for Fukushima residents. Uh, that was a dialogue forum, total nine forums, was held by the Fukushima prefecture and the AESG um, both uh, organization. The first speaker is a government, a governor of the Fukushima prefecture, and the second speaker uh, is a, a president of the uh, AESG. In, the case, in that case, the specific first uh, presenter is me uh, regarding the radiation monitoring and the health effects. And after the, this presentation, uh, we had a uh, two hours of discussion, question and um, answer at that time. There are, there are many, many um, aggressive questions and comments from floor. But um, there is a very effective way we found at that time. This is um, for the public understanding of the radiation risk was to compare the radiation risk with the natural background radiation, you know, and also the lifetime background cancer risk in the 47 prefectures uh, of Japan. This is a map of the natural background radiation, including the uh, cosmic ray, uh, terrestrial gamma, uh, ingestion of food, food, and uh, excluding the radon. So the average value is 0 0.99, and the uh, minimum is 0 0.81, and the maximum is 1.19. So the, the difference is that 0.38 millisievert per year uh, can understand for moving the living area to the these prefectures. But this is too small number to explain, the, to gain the understanding from the Fukushima residents at that time. And this is a map of the lifetime background cancer risk. So that this is a um, ICRP defined uh, uh, radi nominal uh, radiation risk of the 0.5% per 100 millisievert. We calculated the Japanese uh, lifetime background cancer risk in the average value is 25.4%. Uh, From the minimum 23 to the 28. This variation is uh, very important for the um, understand the radiation risk. If the Japanese people have the exposed to the uh, 100 millisievert, this average value is moved to the 25.9. In that case, it, this, this is 1 millisievert. 25.405. Please consider about the 10 microsieverts per year. This is only the 0.0005% is the, so the increment of the risk. But um, many residents can understand in, within the variation of the background risk. That is a very important point. So the and also, the, it is important such understanding not only by the public, but also the regulator, I think. The regulator may sometimes require the operators to apply an excessively conservative clearance process simply to gain the public acceptance. So the, I think the regulatory, uh, regulators should clearly understand that the radiation exposure on the order of 10 microsieverts per year. So conclusion. Uh, NRA's uh, uh, new decision uh, is up to about uh, 10 times stricter than the probabilistic approach uh, provided by the IAEA safety report number 67. And a uh, similar approach was found in the ISO IAC guide. However, as a result of the discussion from various viewpoints, uh, it has been recommended but, um, that uh, there is no need to apply the methodology from the ISO IAC guide 1984. But this is my View my conclusion. I think that this conclusion should be carefully reviewed again by the international radiological protection community. Uh, please let me hear uh, your international voice to me. 
Uh, this is because I would like to uh, reflect your voice to the next uh, uh, consultancy meeting in the IAEA. So the one question is uh, uh, on the application of the conformity assessment uh, ISO IC guide to regulation for Koreans. Question two is uh, uh, apply to the regulation for the other radiological protection criteria. My view is uh, to answer is both no, no. Please listen to your voice. Thank you so much. Thank you. We've got to have uh, time for at least one question. So how do you define low probability scenarios? How do you judge between low, very low? Um, I'm not a member of the um, de to deliberation of the uh, Korean syllabus, but uh, um, in my understanding, the, so the uh, low probability scenario and the parameter was selected and paired uh, for the uh, realistic scenario. So realistic case parameter and uh, low probability parameter jointly used by using the each those criteria. Thank you. So we've had any qu any questions from the audience. So and we've had a request to uh, audience participation in the long term by you've given us some homework. Yeah. Please use your Apple, I share your Apple, and search my name, and please send me the message, your message or your view or your comment. Thank you.